Hello, thanks for joining me on Life and Surround. Today I'm going to be reviewing for you Roger Waters, Us and Them, and Nick Mason's Saucer Full of Secrets, recent live Blu-rays. Now it's an exciting time to be a fan of surround music and while I'm waiting on the new Fish album to show up, Santana's debut, uh, Vienna from Ultravox, and Tears for Fears, Seeds of Love, all of which I'm pretty excited about, I had time to throw on these concerts which are also uh, pretty recent releases and I wanted to discuss with you today like the difference in the experience. Uh, I profoundly liked one of these shows and didn't really get much out of the other. And I just want to go into why and hear your opinions um, in the comments and through your messages and just kind of open up a dialogue about these recent concerts that are put on by um, like one member of a long established group um, in a way that kind of curates the back catalog, celebrates it, maybe exploits it, and just kind of share my take on it and get your take on it. Alright, so Roger Waters versus Nick Mason. Which one was the more enjoyable experience? Um, for me, it was without a doubt Nick Mason's Saucer Full of Secrets. I found this show to be a lot of fun. It felt fresh. It felt like the participants were authentically there to enjoy themselves and to share that enjoyment with their audience. Uh, by contrast, I felt like much of the Roger Waters show was just kind of tired and stale. If it weren't for the spectacular visuals, uh, I don't think that it would have been even worth the time that I spent on it. The musicians did a great job instrumentally, but the vocalist that Waters hired uh, just didn't bring any passion or power to his parts. It almost sounds to me like he's about to fall asleep with every line that he sings. And then the lines that Waters covers, like he doesn't even bother to sing complete melodies. Like he sings an abbreviated, simplified version of almost every line that he delivers for you. And his voice isn't that good anymore either. Uh, the most enjoyable part of the Roger Waters show for me are actually the three new songs from the latest album. I felt like they were the most fresh. Uh, delivered with the most authenticity and were also written in like a very simple almost speaking singing style that Waters can pull off pretty well in this day and age. And you know the rest of the Pink Floyd songs we've heard them all before and I really feel like there's a better version of every single one of the Pink Floyd songs on some other concert video. All right, so more about um, Nick Mason's Saucer Full of Secrets. This thing goes all the way back to Pink Floyd's debut, Piper at the Gates of Dawn, and doesn't come any further forward than metal, if I recall correctly. So you get Pink Floyd's early catalog, is the point. And these songs are mostly ones that have been neglected over the years, and uh, I just found this to be just a fascinating view into the early band. I have heard most, if not all, of the recordings that are referenced here. And, um, you know, I happen to be a bigger fan of, you know, the more streamlined, commercialized Pink Floyd of later years. Uh, the songs are amazing, the production as well. And,. Even still, I found Saucer Full of Secrets, the show, to be more intriguing. The band was put together in sort of a random, accidental, ad hoc fashion. 
uh, guys just enjoying jamming some of that early Pink Floyd material. They roped in Nick, uh, who I guess was game because he rehearsed with them and had fun and wasn't doing anything else at the time. And then they performed the show for a test audience and it went over really well and they decided to make a production out of it. And that authenticity just really comes through with the performance. The musicians do a credible job of the material. They stick fairly close to the way that songs are laid down on the original albums. The big difference being that there are no original Pink Floyd vocals in the group. And I feel like the vocalists here are doing a very competent job, uh, but that may be the weak point for some viewers. But that said, I still found it thoroughly enjoyable and I really wish that more bands would pay this much respect to the older portions of their catalogs. And again, in contrast, Waters here is bringing you Pink Floyd classics that we've all heard tons of times, done better in earlier renditions. And if it weren't for him bringing these giant projection screens, like way out into the audience, I think in a way to just drive value for people way, way, way back in the arena show. I really wouldn't have found watching the show to be very redeemable. Now because I'm big into surround sound, let's cover the mixes briefly. Both of these concerts are mainly your traditional concert style mix, even in surround, with the band up front as if the stage is always ahead of you, audience all around. The big difference is that the Roger Waters show comes with an Atmos soundtrack. It also has a 5.1 dedicated soundtrack, so don't worry if you don't have an Atmos system. Some of the songs do make use of the Atmos sound field, even during the songs, particularly with those Pink Floyd sound effects that we all know and love, like money in a cash drawer. Uh, there's a point where the flying pig goes oink, oink, oinking like all around the room, and that definitely got the attention of my three-year-old and then especially during cinematic segues between songs. The soundtrack for Us and Them definitely makes use of the Atmos surround field in a way that you can discern. I would compare it to the Atmos soundtrack that you can get on the German ASCOT Elite edition of Metallica's Through the Never, where you're never going to really hear the band performing in a meaningful way up in the Atmos, but it definitely does add to the cinematic experience. So don't worry if you don't have a region free player or you can't find a copy of this, just get the normal 7.1 version. You're going to enjoy the sound like 99% as much. So yeah, the Atmos isn't like a giant value for us and them. And to me, it really doesn't help me enjoy the performance. Okay. It was interesting to hear at the time. But I really don't think that I'm ever going to watch this show again, at most or not. Uh, Nick Mason's show is mixed in 5.1 and it mostly is your conventional uh, live soundtrack, band up front, audience all around you. I would just say that uh, there are a few notable examples during the show when mainly guitar effects are panned very meaningfully, very noticeably out into the surround field during key moments of certain songs. And it is a lot of fun. It just doesn't appear very often. And so I wouldn't call it a consistent use of surround. All right, so we've discussed two recent live concert videos from one member of a long-standing band, one that acknowledges the older part of the catalog and one that kind of hits the more recent, more popular stuff. And they both have fairly conventional live mixes. And I just want to contrast both of those briefly to um, a live show that recently just really, really floored me. And I think is just one of the best live concert values that you could possibly track down at this time. I did a review of it recently. Steve Hackett's Live at Hammersmith, uh, Selling England by the Pound and Spectral Mornings. Not only um, did Mr. Hackett assemble just the right band, including vocalists, to really deliver the material in an excellent way, 
but he also hired surround mixing wizard Stephen Wilson to really do the sound and mix on this show justice. It's well shot, it's well played, so like this is the way to do it guys. And uh, runner up for best live concert that I'm aware of right now would be Nick Mason's Saucer Full of Secrets. Uh, if you like or are intrigued by Pink Floyd's early, 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 early catalog, go ahead and give this a shot. I loved it, I will be watching it again. And I'm gonna go ahead and just say, take a pass on Roger Waters' Us and Them. I think what he's doing is just really tired and it just really didn't do anything for me. Um, this is the first Pink Floyd related show where I really don't like the backup singers. Uh, they disturbed me and annoyed me throughout the whole show from their like way overdone eye effects to their wigs, the way that they dance like robots pretty much the whole time. It's just another example of how this show really falls flat for me and really just isn't my thing. Even though, you know, I love just about every song that's performed, uh, the show just really fails to engage and entertain and delight me. So I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to hearing your commentary on um, any of the four shows that I have mentioned today. Uh, what works for you for a live concert release. Uh, whether you agree with me about us and them, agree with me about Saucer Full of Secrets. If you have recommendations for other excellent live recent releases that I need to check out, if you haven't heard me mention them. Um, if you like what I do, don't forget to like the video, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, ring the notification bell so you're aware of new videos, share this video if you know of an appropriate way to do so, appropriate forums, uh, Facebook groups, friends who might be interested, etc. and so forth. And hopefully coming up soon, if the Postal Service can deliver, I'll be covering Fish, Ultravox, Tears for Fears, Santana, and more. It is a very exciting time to be a fan of surround music, and I'm glad that we can all enjoy it together. And that being said, until next time, I'll just encourage you to live life in surround.